everybody, this is Tobias. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys my zero volt switching flyback driver. Uh, Deanna will know what I'm talking about here with the flyback driver, but uh, basically what this is, is uh, it's a transformer that comes out of a television set, and it's used to drive the electron beam across the screen. So the electron beam will go across the screen and then fly back. Go across the screen and then fly back. That's what they call it, a flyback driver. This one is rated for, well you can't really see it, but it says uh, 26.9 thousand volts. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got it that high yet, but I'm pretty dang close. Um, the driver itself is a little bit different from the ones that uh, most people have seen. This is uh, zero volt switching. The MOSFETs turn on and off when the voltage across them is zero. And they do this to preserve their switching capability. They do, they do it to preserve the power. Uh, that's lost in the chips. And what they do is they drive uh, an inductor capacitor resonance loop. This is the capacitor and then it, the current will go through these wires and around this primary coil. This black thing is the iron core and then wrapped around a bunch of times on the inside of this is the really thin wire that produces the high voltage. And by using the resonance I'm able to drive just ridiculous amounts of power into this thing. Uh, but I do need quite a lot of current to do that. And that's what this guy is for. I posted a picture of this a little while ago. Uh, this basically rectifies the alternating current from the wall, turns it into DC, and uh, then stores it in capacitors until it's needed. And this thing can handle about 10 amps at any voltage up to 120 volts but I don't need 120 volts and in fact that would probably wreck everything so I've got this thing which is called a Variac and it allows me to select any voltage I want uh, and this is still AC but it allows me to select the voltage anywhere between 0 and 120 volts so I'm going to plug it in now <coughs> it's all off, set to 0 Turn that on. Now one of the problems I've been having is that that LC circuit, that resonant circuit, um, it doesn't start oscillating unless it's uh, perturbed. So I have to perturb the system and then those MOSFETs will take over and will drive the, the LC circuit. So I have to look at the ammeter and make sure it's not drawing too much current. I'm going to turn up the voltage here. So it's going up, and yeah, it just keeps on going up and up and up. Okay, now I have to perturb the system by shorting the gate of the MOSFET to ground. And see now the current has dropped down to 70 milliamps instead of 3 amps. And that's because those MOSFETs are only using power to drive the LC circuit. I'm going to increase the voltage to about 20 volts and show you what this thing can do. As you can see, the current that it's drawing only increases when the spark is going. And it's related to the amount of power that the transformer is using. And I can get even bigger sparks by increasing that voltage. So here's 30 volts. actually lighting the atmosphere on fire. There's so much current, so much power going through the air that it's lighting the air on fire. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. 40 volts. So you can see it's only drawing uh, 700 milliamps when there's no power being drawn by the transformer. That's really good. up there and drawing quite a lot of amperage because that uh, lighting the atmosphere on fire takes a lot of power. So I've got to be careful with that. Alright, now I'm going to show you what it can do. 
<coughs> on my Tesla coil. That spark that you saw was way, way longer than anything that my little neon sign transformer in there can do. That can make a spark about maybe an inch and a half long at best. So I'm going to bring this over. Yeah, this is probably really hot. Yeah, that's really, really, really hot. <laughs> Yeah, the reason it gets so hot is actually because um, this plate ionizes atoms in the atmosphere. And then since this is negative and this is positive, oh wait, no, it's the other way around. This is positive and this is negative. So all the positively charged nuclei go to this plate and they have way more kinetic energy than the electrons that hit this plate. So this heats up a lot. over. I'm just going to hook that on there where the neon sign transformer usually goes. And hook that on there. So now the flyback is driving the Tesla coil instead of the neon sign transformer. <coughs> Bring this back down. goes. I perturb the system. There it goes. It's now oscillating. I'm going to turn up the voltage until I get some sparks. There we go. It's actually so powerful, even at low voltages, that it's causing sparks to jump across the secondary. That's way more than that neon sign transformer can do. Right, there's my chicken stick. One bad thing about using the flyback is that it's got a diode internally, and when I had the neon sign transformer hooked up to this, it would just automatically discharge through the transformer, so I didn't have to worry about anything. But this thing is kind of dangerous. All those capacitors uh, hold a huge charge. I could shock myself pretty bad. I'm just going to uh, reduce the length of the spark gap here. Try this again. Throw on current perturb and here we go. So I'm only at 10 volts AC and already I'm getting almost as much power as the neon sign transformer can deliver. So that's going to be the basis for a lot of my future high voltage projects. I'm not going to mess with neon sign transformers anymore. I'm just going to rig up my flyback drivers like this, because you get way more power out of them for much cheaper. Alright, I guess that's it. See you later.